Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I am your host, Larry the Chupacabra, and we are going to jump back into the marvelous world of Ludum Dare with Ludum Dare number 30. I, of course, only got started with Ludum Dare with Ludum Dare number 29. And, of course, um, we're going to start off with three games by three lovely developers for the um, 48-hour competition half of Ludum Dare, mostly because that was the uh, first sort of games that were available for me to kind of pick through and list. And um, for anyone curious, the lovely wallpaper up on the screen right now is done by my two bestest buds from Two Scoops Games. And um, I was looking for a wallpaper. Wouldn't you know it? They had a really sexy one for Ludum Dare number 30. So let's just jump right in here with Warp Corp. And um, Warp Corp, you're a contractor, and your job is to connect worlds of the hegemonic empire together through magical time rifts or some sort of gajizzle. And you'll have to face black holes, supernovas, and raiders on the job. And you gotta make sure you get as many of those portals open and as many credits made as possible, or else you'll get fired when your company runs out of the monies. So we've got to keep control of a warp crane um, over top of the warp portal in the center of the screen, utilizing our arrow keys. And then we need to make sure we use our um, disruptor blasters in order to um, rip holes in space-time and destroy cosmic obstacles. Sounds simple enough, let's do the thing. Alrighty, we start at, where's my, okay, there's my blaster. My mouse controls my blaster. It's a little bit disconcerting to um, control stuff with my fingers on the arrow keys as opposed to WASD. But you know what, that's just a matter of preference. Um, I can certainly tell you right off the bat that I really dig the art style. Um, it definitely looks like it was hand painted in paint, probably. But, um, given limited resources, I'd say this looks flippin' schnazzy. We've got these warp pillar- oh, whoops, my freaking crane is getting wandery. Stay in there, you flippin'. You bugger. Okay, so I make credits, um, and don't lose credits as long as that crane stays in the center of this warp coil. And, oh crap. And, um, that's my life bar. My credits up here at the top. Whoops. Man, this is hard to keep track of everything at once. Wanders as you're trying to shoot black holes, and the black holes are hard to see. I like that. I like that a lot. Spicy supernovas and pirate raiders here in orange, trying to steal my delicious hard-earned space credits. There's one- oh crap. There's one thing Larry does not abide by. It's people coming in and stealing his space credits so that he cannot buy space sheep skulls, or just space sheep to hunt in his space ranch and suck the marrow out of the bones because that's what chupacabras do it's not not something i am going to abide by oh goodness the more portals you open the faster things try to come murder you uh oh but yeah i definitely dig the art style right off the bat um it's kind of hard to see what looks like a spirally galaxy in the background but it's very clear that these are like some sort of super advanced, um, almost circuit boardy type um, pillars off to the sides, controlling our cosmic ripper blast. That's like a red X, and they remind me a lot of like I don't know, sort of like Mayan ruins meets Stonehenge, and they got this cool little particle effect, and that is making the most of what you got in like a paint program. It's not over the top, so you don't run into like. A disorganized inconsistency in your artwork. My goodness, these things are getting crazy. I'm gonna get murdered. No, no, oh good, oh grave, oh good gravy, Batman. This is what I'm talking about in space, time. You'd think that a big galactic empire like the Hemadraba Jubazur would give us some defense. My goodness, these are like cosmic raiders of the Lost Ark. Don't sue me, George Lucas. But, um, wow, this is crazy. Okay, but yeah, definitely like the definitely like the art. And um, the sounds are strong. Everything has its own sound. It's a nice ambiance. A very relaxing ambiance in the background. Oh crap. Um this is legitimately difficult. Wow. This is spicy. Who knew that intergalactic travel was so difficult? Just trying to tear a hole in the cosmic fabric of reality, gentlemen. There's no reason to get spicy with Larry. I mean, it's not like I might rip open a hole in space and time and kill us all. Not at all. What? Oh, God. So, where? Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. 
No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, good. Oh, good gravy. Wow, this is really... So, talking about the things that we need to talk about for Ludum Dare, um, it looks like this theme here, or how it ties into the theme... Wow, I'm almost... Oh, no, 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 crap! No, 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 get back to the center, no! Alright, well, this is legitimately difficult, but... So, talking about themes and how this fits in, clearly the main way that this connects to the theme of connected worlds is our job is literally to connect worlds or pathways of travel and communication for this hemo hemoglobin empire by opening up these interstellar portals and traveling around the galaxy doing that. So that's kind of cool. Um, as I was saying, the artwork is pretty sound. Um, for innovation, um, I don't know. I'm not the biggest guy on how to analyze things like innovation, but I think this has got a lot of cool stuff going on. I mean, basically, it's two mini-games crammed into one, and you don't have to worry about anything that seems to give a lot of interstellar, interplanetary space games trouble, like trying to worry about flying the ship as you shoot stuff, because not everyone's super great at dogfighting. But generally, people are good at keeping um, a couple X and Y axes um, in order for keeping this portal under control. And then you just use your mouse to shoot stuff. And there's one thing I enjoy is when people who make a game it's going to be primarily on the PC platform with proper mouse use utilization. Really enjoy that. Um, so yeah, it's too many games in one. It's not too complicated. Um, it's not too simple. The combination here is very cool. And it's very nice to the theme. And it's definitely not super easy to do either. Um, it is keeping me on the edge of my seat, because there's really not a super great way to keep that orb in the middle. You have to constantly be, like, clicking the buttons, your arrow keys, in order to kind of have it hovering in the center, because it lists off and floats, and as these different things get close, black holes try to suck it away from the center, and the supernovas explode and push it away. And of course, these little pirate ships try to steal my credits. Ah, oh, what? See? See what I mean? Um... But yeah, um, it was pretty fun. I like this game. This was Warp Corp by Sean Bodley for Ludum Death 30 for the 48-hour compo. Check it out. Links are in the description for all of these delicious games. And we'll move on to Neeklid by Unit 0x0961H. Alrighty, so Neeklid is an interesting puzzle game done by unit 0x0961h and um this is interesting and we're just going to we're going to skip the uh, tutorial level we're just going to jump into the bifurcation theory level so here we are and you'll notice we're stuck we have to push these little um squares into these pressure plates but we can't seem to reach them we can't even move our little duder around in the strange interdimension so we summon the Neeklid. Why, hello, mortal. I am here to assist you. All right, you f spicy alien. All right, so basically, this is our interdimensional associate, the Neeklid overlord, warp master. Him and his dainty horns and glowy face. He almost looks insectoidal. Um, and he's going to help us move these blocks into place so that we can open up these portals, as you can see here. These portals in the floor. And we can get out of this dimension because the Neeklid doesn't want to stay in human realm and we don't want to stay with the Neeklid because they they kind of they kind of want to eat our flesh. Um, I don't know if you know that about the Neeklids, but they're a little bit spicy. And so you can also switch between the characters by pressing E. One of the bugs that I found in the game is when not when you press E um, on different levels, you can't always switch between the characters. I don't know if that's intentional or unintentional, but it's there. Wow, this is quite a bit more complicated than I remember. So we're going to bring this little blocky down. And we're going to flop him. Do I want to? Yeah, I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to bring it upwards. And so this is where the interdimensional interplay here comes into play. So when I switch dimensions, I can leave the Neeklid in the human world in the pink. Or he can just be in the blue and disappear when I switch dimensions and I can just control the human. But I want 
to control the Neeklid. So we're going to close the dimensional void, take a step over here, and then as the dimensions realign, I'm on this side of this block here in the center. And I'm going to move it... Um, right, so as I was saying, we go through the dimensional void, and we can realign ourselves when we come out on the other side of the dimensional void and move blocks. It's rather splendid, I won't lie. And, um, yeah, that's basically the game. And it, it, it warps your mind a little bit. It's like thinking with portals in Port 2. Um, how did I do this before? Uh, we'll take a look at another one of these levels. Once Upon a Square. This one's a little bit easier. We'll just take our human being out here to the edges. We'll just push all these blocks to the corners. And, um, so right off the bat, you can tell... Um, a robotic friend who made this game, he did a lovely job just literally making it so there's two interconnected worlds that literally have to do things together or else they can't function at all. And that's pretty spiffy, old lie. Um, wait, how did I... did I jank this up? I think I did already. Whoops! And so the art style as well is very delectable. It's, it's obviously not the world's most um, photorealistic, but it's 8-bit, and you can tell what's what. And the characters, for their lack of resolution, are absolutely delightful. Um, you can definitely tell this is a crazy alien creature with a glowing insectoid face with these crazy antlers, like he's a satyr. Um, he dances and prances around pushing blocks, and... Wait. Alright, we'll do this one lasty. Um... Do 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 do. I'm a monster. Yes, I am. Oh, okay. Don't eat my don't eat my skin. I need it, Nicky. I'm gonna call you Benjamin Neekly. Um, it sounds like a perfectly reasonable name to me. Um, Benjamin, you uh you studied at Warp Dimension High, got your um diploma. I don't think that Neeklids have a college. I, I'm not necessarily an expert on that. And as you noticed, I can actually step on these pads and activate the portals. But both of us need to be on our respective interdimensional portals, or else we cannot leave this interstitial prison. So we got to put this on here. And then Mr. Um, George here in the center is already on his portal, so I just need to get on mine. And we exit. And then, of course, we get down to the last level, and this is absolutely ridiculous. I have not yet fi finished this, but um, I give this game a two thumbs up. This was fun. This, I feel, is definitely innovative. It It's, it's literally taking a very simple concept, but making it very complicated. And it, it, it's basically, like I said, thinking with portals, or in this case, Now you're thinking with Neeklid dimensions, Timmy. Just don't let them eat your eyeballs. They're like candy to them. But yes, this game was splendid. Um, I don't have too much feedback for this. It just seems like you need to twiddle with the controls a little bit. And um, you know what? If you gave this a storyline and like a mission and some background as to what's happening and why and what the Neeklids are doing and maybe you've got some crazy sweet interdimensional power, this game would make for a splendid, um, a splendid game outside of Ludum Dare. I think you should continue to evolve this. Um, otherwise, it's great. I like it. Delicious. I'm going to look forward to whatever you do with this. All right. Last, but certainly not least, is a game by Joe Williamson called Sinister. And it is a game that he himself said he got a little bit overboard with, didn't get a chance to add absolutely everything just yet. And Joe, I hope you go back and finish the game the way you had intended with your magical artistic vision, because it's beautiful. Um, and the original goal with this game was to make it an interconnected place between the world of death and the world of the living. And I think that sounds cool, but we'll, I, won't, I won't give you too many spoilers. We'll just jump in here and start touching stuff. And then I died. I don't remember quite how. It was a spicy evening. We were behind Arby's. But I remember... I remember a very little. But... what? But I know that I am here. I have a lovely, lush, flopping cape. I'm 
delectable top hat because I can see my own reflection. But it's a marvelously handsome reflection, and I see the night sky. Can I jump around yet? And I remember. What do you remember? What do you remember, my my delicious top hatted chap? What do you remember? Let us dance, dance the lance of life and moon and wow, this is really pretty. This is really pretty. Look at this. Look at all of this. Let's dance around. Let us dance. We are what? Okay, that's a little weird. I remember the shape of the earth beneath my feet. Ooh. Well, isn't that pretty? Tis I, the sinister Lord of Shadows. And I remember this place. You know what? I can say right off the bat, this is a really pretty game. This is really pretty artwork. This is really flippin' cool. And we met on that earth. Who did you meet, my top-headed friend? That that frickin' cape is ridiculously floppy. Not bad controls, I like it. Oh, there's a lovely waterfall and there's a bench. Oh, what have we got here? Another waterfall and a cave. Whee, is it a tree? Press space to activate. We hid that key. Far out west. Hmm, okay. What's down here? Oh, it's a bridge. And more water. Okay. Yeah, this looks cool. It's real pretty. It's got really nice art. Um, and it looks like it's got a nice narrative style as well. Okay. Got a nice little bench where we presumably meant the love of our life. Not sure if that popped up or not. Uh, I played this before to check it out a little bit, and there was a thing at this bench, and that's where I stopped. But somewhere way out west is, oh, there's a key. Not quite so out west, but yay, it's a love key. And I remember this key. It's the key that I used to use to open my haberdasher shop, where I made the creepiest hats in town, that even the Mad Hatter was too scared to put on, because he is the most delightful chap, and okay. The one thing I can say, though, is maybe if you do go back and twizzle with the sound, this is a really intense soundtrack for, like, a really relaxed type of story game. I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm just saying it doesn't seem to fit. But the interconnectedness of this extra dimension where death and life meet is kind of cool. And I do know that this is where this game ends. Um, but I think this is cool, and I think this could make a great game. Um, I'm not sure how you would... I mean, you'd, you'd need, I feel like you'd need some puzzles in here, and um, some fightingness, but it could be delectable. It could definitely be delectable. So do the thing. Um, do the thing. Alrighty. Swoop. Ah, I said you would never be alone. Who are you, my delicious fixer? Oh no. Well, that was kind of cool. But yeah, tasty art. Um, it looks like it's got a pretty nice way of telling a story. Um, it's very free-flowing. It, it, it could definitely have some potential. I, I, won I really hope you refine this, Joe, and um, build it out into a further game. It's got a nice way of handling the theme. Otherwise, it's kind of bare-bones, so it's hard to give you too much feedback, but definitely twizzle with the sound. But otherwise, guys, thanks for joining me. Been your host. Larry the Chupacabra. We've got a whole bunch more of these episodes coming. I'm going to try and tackle these in sets of two to four to five games a piece. Um, I got a lot of great, cool stuff coming up. A lot of really cool indies that I've been following and meeting and talking with since um, I first jumped into the jam scene with um, Flappy Bird. I've been making so much awesome, delicious games. Um, I'm definitely going to try and touch as many of them as possible over the next three weeks before voting ends. And a very nice job to everyone who made these games that I first checked out for this first preview. It was excellent. Keep up the splendid work, and I will catch you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I have new intros that I've been using, so if you liked those, or you didn't like them, or you have tips for me that how you think they might be better, let me know. Otherwise, I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra. Don't forget to check the description for those delicious links to these games, and vote on them if you're involved in Loot and Dare. And I will catch you next time. Toodaloo!